Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So I have a question for you guys to sit down. I have a question for all of you this morning. Are you a worm or are you a butterfly? I mean, turn to your neighbor and say whatever you are, a worm or a butterfly. We got to know right now what we are, a worm or, or are we a butterfly this morning? Yeah. I am a butterfly in so many areas of my life. I'm a butterfly. You know, and the Lord had showed me in the past when I was a worm, when I was like crawling on the ground, like, like I was lower than a snake's belly in a wagon rut. I mean, that's pretty low. But I am no longer that anymore. I am a child of God. I am free. I am chosen. I am forgiven. I am His. And He's mine. I'm so grateful for Him this morning. And I have to use a mic this, this mic this morning. My other one's not working, so it's throwing me off big time, but we'll get through it. <laughs> I'm just grateful for him this morning. Let's just pray and ask the Lord to just intervene right now in this 10-minute, this, uh, maybe 30-minute little segment here. And Father, yeah, Father, we love you right now. God, we thank you, Lord, for the ones that come out today to work, to hear the word that you have. And God, just to work for you and just to... Uh, to have fellowship one with another, Lord. We thank you, God, for them coming to the house this morning, being faithful for that this morning, God. We thank you for who you are, for who we are in you. God, for that place that you created for every one of us to rest in. We thank you this morning for that, Jesus. For you're merciful, you're righteous, and you're good. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, once, once we could have been a worm, but now we can be a butterfly. And it, the butterfly consists of if we believe in Jesus and who he says that we are and who he says he is, we must believe this morning. And that word is so deep. When you, when you say the word, I believe, when you say, I believe, it's deeper than just I believe because Satan believes, but he ain't going to heaven. Satan walked and talked with God, but he ain't going to heaven. So there's this deeper meaning to the word believe. And I believe that the scriptures I'm going to give you this morning, there's a few of them. So get your Bibles ready. We're going to do sword drills. Get your Bibles ready because it's going to be good. We're not doing sword drills, if you know what that is. <laughs> but when you believe, that means that you're transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, when you go through this metamorphosis, where'd my picture go? I had a picture up here, I thought. When you go through this metamorphosis from a worm to a butterfly, that's a transition that you have to make. And without Jesus being the sinner, you cannot make that transition. You'll never be able to become from the worm, the worthless worm, crawling upon the ground until you receive Jesus Christ. And when you receive him and you believe in him and you ask God to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all sin, then you become from a worm and you go through that metamorphosis. And you become a butterfly. And there might be things in your life that you see that you're operating out of like a worm. God wants you to transform those things too. The Word of God says, I'm a new creature in Christ. And all things become new. Say all. What's that mean? Yeah. All things become new. And we'll go there in just a minute. But right now I want you to know that he is working, he's building, he's creating new things in you. Things are coming out of you that you never knew were in you. There's sin that's coming out of your life that you never knew was there. And God wants you to be transformed. He wants you to take every one of those things. Again, as I said, I, I'm down to watching Little House on the Prairie. I'm going to build from that. If I have time, I don't even really have time. But I'm going to build from that if, if, I, if I watch TV. <laughs> but I want you to know this morning that God has something for every one of you. You might see yourself as a worm. But don't you know God sees you and dreamed you so much more than that. And you might even be a worm right now. You might be in that mode of a worm, not ever really giving your life to God, but giving it, giving it to him to get something out of your life, out of 
God or out of church or out of whatever you said, I believe. Because there's so many people in the world today that said, I believe, but their actions don't show it. The fruit of their life don't show it at all, at all. And you probably know people like that. But God says that, that when we become like him, we, we become like him. When we ask him to come in our heart and live in our life, we become like him. And we're going to go through some of those scriptures here in a minute. I want you to know God can see something in you that you might not see. I even see something in you that you probably don't see. Because I see you how he created you. That's, that's something that he's given me. Like I literally see you as a finished product. That's where my joy, I see you and I'm like, that, that, that is amazing. Nate, amazing. Who God created you to be is amazing. Maybe where you see yourself at is not that amazing state. I need some ambient music too, please. If you have any. Thank you. I'm going to tell you a story. You know, Jacob went from deceiver to Israel. God gave him a new name. God blessed him. Even in the midst of all of his stuff, God blessed him. He went from deceiver to Israel. What is your new name? Have you asked God if you have a new name? Because when you become a Christian, you, you are given a new name. When old things pass away and all things become new, you're given a new name. When it truly happens. So this morning I'm going to challenge you, did it truly happen? Did you truly come from a worm to a butterfly? Some have and some haven't. And it's okay if you haven't because we can start the metamorphosis today. You guys know anything about pigs? Who knows something about pigs? Like, I know a lot about pigs. When I was a young boy, I, I, I was, um, worked on a hog farm, like a very young boy, worked on a hog farm. And I want you to know that pigs like wallowing in mud. How many of you know that? How many of you know some people don't even know what a pig is? That's how crazy the world is. Some people don't even know where their bacon or ham comes from. When I was a, when I was a young teenage boy, um, I worked for this farmer, and we'd do the Covered Bridge Festival in Park County, Indiana. We'd always do the, uh, the, the rouse, the bus rouse, where you take people all around and show them all of the covered bridges, and I would stand in the front of the bus, and I got, it, was like, it was like a big thing for me, because I got to stand there and hold the, the mic thing and go... This bridge was built in 1866 by J.J. Daniels or, you know, whoever it was that built the bridge. And I got to tell them all about the bridges and the farms and all the stuff that we went through because I was on that route day in and day out, year in and year out. And, and there was one time that we come and we, we went by the pasture and we saw all the hogs in the pasture and, and the people said, well, what are those? So we stopped the bus and let them get out. They went to the fence, and the hogs were just squalling and wrestling in the mud, and they're like, what are these? They had no idea. They had no idea what a hog was. That's how ignorant some people are. Ignorant don't mean you're dumb. It just means you don't know. So when someone says you're ignorant, it might be true. I'm ignorant of a lot of things. But listen. That hog will waller in the mud to keep itself cool. The hog knows its identity. The hog does not have any sweat glands to sweat like we do. If you didn't know that, now you know it. So you're not ignorant of that anymore. A hog does not have sweat glands. That's why it goes to the mud to cool off. But I want you to know this morning, you can take a hog out of the mud... You can take them out of the mud, and you can clean them up. And I know Shelly would probably love to do this, take a hog and just clean it all up and give it a bath and clean it up and, you know, braid this little pigtail. And uh, 
But you can do that. You can take a hog and kick it out of the mud, get it all washed up, and just dine it, give us some food, get its nails all done. You'll get, just do a makeover on a hog. You can do a complete makeover. Like some of us do today, we do a makeover of our bodies and our appearance of what we look like, but nothing changes except that makeover. We look good, but inside's a yucky mess. Our houses on the outside look good, but on the inside it's chaos. When you come to church, you look good, but no one knows what happens when you leave or even the fight that happened on your way. But you can take that hog and you can clean it all up and give it a makeover and do whatever you want to do with it, and that hog's just prancing around, just all pretty, prancing around. But I'll tell you what. Because of who it is and how it was made, when you let that thing back out to the pasture, guess where the first place it's going to go? Back to the mud. Get them pretty nails all dirty while they're in the mud. That's what it's going to do. And I want you to know that you're created to be amazing sons and daughters. God created you that way, to be amazing sons and daughters, and that's who he called you to be. That might not be where you're walking right now. That not, might not be what you see when you look in the mirror, but that's how he sees you. He sees past all the stuff, and nothing surprises him. Listen, nothing surprises him. When you mess up, when you mess up, have you ever messed up a couple times? <laughs> when you mess up, man, you know what? God don't go. He ain't up there going, wow. He knew. And he knows what it's going to take to get you in a better place. But we have to listen and be obedient to what he says to do. We have to listen and be obedient. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to go through a bunch of scriptures here. I'll go through them quick because I know you guys wanted to work. I want you to know this morning, do not believe what the world says about you. Do not believe if you're if do not believe what the world says about you because people are going to say stuff about you. They're going to talk about you. They're going to have you for their lunch. Maybe even today you might go home today. I might be on the, the dinner table today. Time we're done. I get up here, you know that pastor, man. Some of the stuff he said. I just don't know if I want to eat it. I don't know if I want to process it. I'm going to give you the word of God today. So it ain't going it ain't going to be me. It's going to be the word of God. So if you don't want to eat it. It's going to be up to you. Don't let the world define you, who you are. Your identity doesn't come from the world. It comes from Christ. Be encouraged today because you are his if you are in him. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is, a new, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things pass away. And all becomes new. The new thing has come. You're a child of God. Listen. And John 1.12 says this. But to all who did receive him, he gave them the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. The, listen, this is going to be throughout this. Those who believe in his name believe that he is the son of God. He's going to give you, he gives you the right. This, these are some of the benefits of becoming a Christian. There's some of the benefits of becoming a Christian. These scriptures right here. Speaking into who you are. I am who you say I am. I'm no longer a slave to sin. That first song, Echo, so good. Go back and listen to the words because it's so, so good. And God wants to always constantly echo to you who you are and whose you are. One of Randy's main gifts is just speaking identity in people. Randy and Carlene, speaking identity into people. Who they are. Whose they are. You're a child of God. And if you believe that you're a branch off the true vine... You're a branch off the vine of God. In John 15, 5, it says this, I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me 
and I in him, listen, this is a two-way thing. You remain in him, and he remains in you, produces much fruit. Because you can do nothing without him. You can do absolutely nothing that matters without him. That's why we have to be connected to the vine, constantly connected. And you notice it says that you will produce much fruit. And in the fruit of the Spirit, do we have the other slide? Fruit of the Spirit slide, maybe, maybe not. No. No, that's not it. That picture I had you load? Anyhow, listen. Listen. Galatians 5, 22 through 26. You don't have that picture? Okay. It says, but the fruit, listen, the fruit, the fruit of the Spirit is this. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. It doesn't say this is the fruits of the Spirit. It says this is the fruit of the Spirit. We must operate out of all these things to operate out of the fruit that God has for us. We can't operate out of some of them and not the other ones because it doesn't say the fruits of the Spirit. That would mean they're all separate. No, this is, this is the fruit of the Spirit, the one fruit. It's a one fruit of the Spirit. The one fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, Faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. If you're lacking any of those, listen, if you're lacking any of those, you might go back and ask the Lord, what, what's going on here? Because you might be able to love well, but you might not have self-control. You might be able to do this well, but you can't do that well. So go just re- rehash it with God and say, what is, what is going on here? What is the root why I can't, why I can't access the fullness of the fruit? Because there's a reason why you can't access the fullness of the fruit. There's a, there's a reason why. You have to know that reason why that fruit is not being produced out of you. Because it should be. When you believe like you should believe, not like Satan believes, but when you believe like you should believe, then you're going to produce fruit. It ha- you have to. You can't say I'm a Christian and not produce any fruit. You, it's just not going to happen. It just don't work that way. You have to produce fruit. Do you know you're a friend of Jesus? How many of you have friends? Now, this is a friend. Now, this is not just like any friend. This, this is, Jesus is a friend that's closer than a brother. I mean, like one of those friends when you break down at midnight and you call and say, hey, I'm broke down. Can you help me? And they're like, Bro, I'm on my way. I only have a few friends like that. And that's okay. We need to find friends like that. When you break down, (laughs) they can come and rescue you in the middle of the night. Those are good friends. Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He says in John 15, 15, it says, I do not call you servants anymore. Why? Because a servant doesn't know what the master is doing. I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from the Father. He's made known, ain't he so good? He's made known everything. He shared everything that the Father shared with him to us. That's what a friend does. A friend is one of those that's like, hey, man, you're going through some struggles here. What can I do to help you? You don't just let them go through. You don't let your people go through stuff and just let them keep going through it. A friend is one that will call out and say, hey, you're, you're, you're messing things up here. Let's, let's get on the track. Because you say you're a Christian, and by your words, we have the same dad. So therefore, you're messing up. This is what dad says we need to do to get it fixed. I'll walk with you through that, but we need to get it fixed. That's what a true friend does. And that's the kind of friend that Jesus is to you and I. You know this morning that you're justified and redeemed? Romans 3.24 says this. They are justified freely by his grace through the redemption 
that is in Christ Jesus. You're justified. Justified means just as if I never did it. So all the sin that the enemy tries to throw before you, all the sin that he tries to throw at you and say, well, you did this, and you did this, and you did this, and you did this. God is saying, you're justified. It's just as if you never did any of those things. So when you get saved, that's one of the benefits of getting saved. You were justified. Now you have a friend in Jesus. You're justified. You're redeemed. Old things gone. New things are coming. It's such a benefit to serve him. Such a benefit to serve him. You're not only that, but you're heirs. I mean, I'm an heir of God. I'm, like, I'm an heir of God who, like, created everything. Like, I'm his son. You're his daughter. If you believe. You're his sons and daughters. I mean, think of it. You're his sons and daughters. I mean, it's like... In Romans 8, 17, it says, We are God's children, and if children, also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, indeed, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. So if I'm an heir of Christ, literally, if Jesus' last name was Christ, I would be Jason Christ. Not that I am the Christ, but I would be Jason Christ because I'm, he's, he's, he's my brother. So just, you know, you can put Christ behind, behind your last name if that was Jesus' last name, which is not his last name. You don't have a last name. He has many names, but you don't have a last name. But if it was Christ, our last name would be Christ if you're a Christian. So I love that. And we also are sanctified saints. Do you know what sanctified means? When you get sanctified, it takes a desire to sin out of your heart. If you desire to sin, then you might want to ask the Lord, I need to be sanctified. I need that cleansed out of me. I need to be sanctified, consecrated unto you. Because when you have a desire to sin, more likely you're going to give in to that desire. Sooner or later, the enemy's going to come at you one way or another with that desire that's still rooted in your heart. And when you have that desire in your heart, you are going to eventually give in to that desire. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's why in the fleshly side, we have to get, kick all these things out. We have to get rid of all these things in our life. The spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. So the uh, sanctified is taking a desire to sin out of your heart. Set apart, consecrated. It's so good. You're a temple of the Holy Spirit. You are literally a temple of the Holy Spirit. I mean, Holy Spirit uses you to rest in, to abide in. Like, uses your body to abide in. I love that. It says here, it says, do, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, another gift, and you're not your own, but you're His. You're members of the body of Christ. Do you know that you're members of the body of Christ? It says in 1 Corinthians 12, 29, it says, now you are the body of Christ. This is when you believe. Now you are the body of Christ, an individual member of it. Now, I'm going to give you an example. To play it out to you, if you're an individual member of the body of Christ, okay, so if you're an individual member, if you're a thumb, if you're a thumb, hitchhike well. If you're a finger, if you're, if you're a finger, if you're a fingerprint, if you're a finger, touch well. Touch what only you're allowed to touch as part of the body of Christ. Touch only the things of God. If you're, if you're a knee, bend. We can't all be the same part of the body. We all have to be different parts of the body. So just kick that out. So don't, every, everybody can't be the pastor. 
And I can't clean the toilets all the time. But I do every Sunday morning in the men's bathroom at least. Shelly does in the women's bathroom. But there will come a day when you'll connect with your part and you might be in there going, hey, pastor, what's going on? Just clean the toilets. I don't know. But if you don't, if you don't do what your body part is supposed to do, that makes it real weird on the body. Like real weird. Like, like, like if you was a knee and didn't bend, I mean, I mean, this is, this, this is how the body would go. I mean, because, I mean, your leg didn't work for a while, did it? I mean, if, if you don't bend your knee, then I, I like being able to move like this. I mean, I, don't, I mean, Cody, can you run without bending your knees? No. No, you can. It's just not very fast. So we are all individual parts of the body, so we must do what we're supposed to do. Some of us go home. We go home to church and say, hey, I did my thing. I went to church. Check. Check. I did check. There's some more to it than that. That's, that's the least part of it, man. There's so much more than just going to church and checking off. Well, I did that for the week. Hey, you go to church? Oh, yeah, I go to church over here. Check. There's so much more than that. If you believe. When you believe. Listen, we are ambassadors of Christ. Ambassadors of Christ. Second Corinthians 5.20 says this, Therefore, we are ambassadors of Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we plead on Christ's behalf, being counseled by God. Can you imagine it? Can you imagine, like, like, like we're standing before God. We're, we're in heaven standing before God. Okay, here we are. We're standing before God in heaven. And the enemy, listen, the enemy, he's got a load of information on you. Like he's storing it up in the cloud wherever that stuff goes. He's storing it up there. He's got all the information on you. And when, 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 when the judge, God says, well, what do you have against them? The doors open wide and the semi-trucks start driving through. I mean, they can't do this thing in a normal court setting because of all the information that he has. And they're just driving through. It's like, was all this thing logged in the books? Was this all given down? Did we get all this? You're just driving through with all your offenses, all the things that you've done wrong. And the enemy's going to run that, them trucks through there. I mean, it's going to be like a convoy running them trucks through there of all the stuff. Man, I know my stuff is going to be like a convoy. But so he, here he goes, he's throwing all this stuff, and then, then he says, well, what do you have to say? And you look at Jesus, who's your attorney, <laughs> like, uh, and Jesus would just stand there and go, look at me. Father, look at me. And the judge will look at Jesus, and when he looks at Jesus, he can't see those trucks anymore. He can't see the sin anymore. He can't see none of those things anymore. Why? Because if you believe those sins are covered. And when you stand before God, he can say to you, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Instead of having no covering for those things and the semi-trucks running through, and then, then he says to you, because you don't have Jesus as your attorney, and he says to you, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. But Lord, I did this. I went to church on Sunday. I did read my Bible. Well, I understand that, but you never knew me. You never knew me. But Lord, we ca I cast out demons. I know because Jesus' name is so powerful, you're able to do those things. But you didn't know me. But Lord, I prophesied, but you didn't know me. I was good, but you didn't know me. You didn't believe. And the enemy wants to get us to believe how he believes without the relationship. Without the fellowship, that's what the enemy wants for you and I. We must believe. I'm almost done. He made Jesus come. Jesus came to this earth. It says in Second Corinthians five twenty one. 
He made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. I mean, look at, I mean, I'm trying to give you all the benefits of believing, all the benefits of being a true Christian, not just a Sunday Christian and going out and living like a hell again the rest of the week, but living like a Christian day in, day out, even when you're at home with your spouse and no one's around. Did my wife and I get in, in arguments? We do. You know why? Because I'm not perfect. She might be, but I'm not. And so, I might try to give her the silent treatment. And she might go hide behind the door while I'm looking for her to give her the silent treatment. And she might jump out behind the door and grab me, jump on my back and say, I'm not going to let go of you until you start talking to me. That's how some of our conversations could go. Not saying they do go that way, but they possibly somehow could go that way. <laughs> she is perfect in my eyes. We're chosen. For he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in love before him, Ephesians 1.4. He chose us in him before the foundations of the world to be holy and blameless in love before him. We're adopted. We're adopted into Christ. We're redeemed. We're forgiven. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of the trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, Ephesians 1, 7. And I love this right here. Ephesians 1, 13 says, In him you were also sealed with the, with the promised Holy Spirit. When you hear the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and when you believe. I love that the Holy Spirit lives in me. I love that I've created a temple for him to reside in. Listen, I'm working on the temple daily. I mean, I literally like daily. Like, and I told you I went on this weight loss thing, and that's why, because I felt like the Lord said, listen, get yourself ready for this next season. So I'm like, I'm getting myself ready. What do you want me to do? Well, I, want, I, need to, I need to shed some pounds. And I'm like, all right, I'll shed some pounds. How do you want me to do it? He told me how to do it. I see this in your life. I want you to clean it up. Okay. You're watching this stuff, and I don't like it. I want you to stop. Okay. Be an obedient vessel. That's what I'm doing, being an obedient vessel. But the Holy Spirit lives in me, and he has sealed me. Like, I am sealed. Nothing can change that. Nothing can change what God has done in me. Nothing. The enemy comes at me still. He, he would like to try, but he cannot change my relationship because why? I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. All these things about him and about myself. Or raised and seated with him in heavenly places. It says, he also raised us up with him, seated, and seated us with him in heavenly, heaven, sorry, and seated us with him in the heavens with Christ Jesus or in Christ Jesus. He's talking about that now we get to be seated in those places. It's not when you, when you die and, and your body just like 
disintegrates in the ground, then you're in heaven. Then we're talking about now we get to be seated in heavenly places with our Father. Now we get to experience those things. It's not when you die. If you're really, truly a true Christian and you really believe, you get to experience all these things now. You get to experience the things from heaven now. I mean, we've seen the healing happen now. Randy spoke it over you this morning. Anybody get touched this morning? Anybody get healed this morning? Your back, your, your eyes, your back, your, your parts of your body? Yeah. Thank the Lord. Keep pressing in for it. He has it for you. He's already paid the price. It's yours. If you believe, listen, if you believe, we just, we just go, God, I need that right there. Yeah. You just pull it down. Place it on you. That's how, that's how accessible we have to heaven. Because the word of God says, I am a citizen of heaven. I am a citizen of the United States of America. And some people are trying to come to the country to be citizens of the United States of America. And they have to go through a procedure to get into the country correctly and become a citizen of the United States of America. We have to do the correct things to become a citizen of heaven. It's so different. God's got a protection wall around his kingdom. Just like we are supposed to have a wall around our country. But, and other countries do. I mean, you can't go to other countries and, and you can't just get in. Uwe, where are you from? Germany. Can I just go and just get in and be a citizen? No. I got a little bit of paperwork to do, don't I? Yeah. Well, I tell you right now, this is your paperwork. <laughs> right here. Right here, you want to you get to heaven, this is your paperwork. This is your standard that you go by. You're citizens of heaven. This is his. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly wait for a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the last one I'm going to say. I'm no longer a slave, but I'm free. I remember when I was enslaved. I remember the things that I did. I remember that... And it's begly, like it's like it's going away. You know, like you like when you buy a new car. Anybody ever buy a new car? I I never got to buy a brand new car, and I probably never will. But I bought new cars before. They're new to me. You know, you had the car with a window rolled down like this, and then all of a sudden you get the new car, and you're like, "Wow!" They'll turn the knob, radio, and all of a sudden you're like, "Wow, I like this." I mean, the old car is there a little bit, but it starts fading away after a while because you get into that new car, that new ride, and that new stuff, and the new things, and the new things that God has for you. You start forgetting about the old things. Because why? The old things pass away, and all things become new. And that's what God wants for you, all those old things, those old memories, those old thoughts to pass away so you can have all this new stuff in your life, all the heavenly stuff, all the good stuff that he wants for you. So I don't remember my old cars. I like the one I have now. It really rides well. Praise God that I know who I am. I know whose I am. So I want you this morning, I want you to think about the stand. I know we all come up earlier, and, and, and I'm thankful for Randy calling you guys up. But I want to ask you a serious question this morning. First question is, would I be able to give you my newborn child to stay with you, to know the Word of God? Would I be able to give you my newborn child to live with you and you to rub off on them in a way that they serve Jesus Christ with everything in them? Do you have that kind of influence with God? Do you live for him that close? Do you believe that well? Because this is the deal. If we don't believe like that, there's going to come a day when you stand before the Lord. And I would rather you have a covering for that sin than not to have a covering for that sin. So it does matter how you believe. It does matter what you believe. The enemy, we've seen 
we've seen the enemy throw all these things out about just, just we can name things. I'm not going to get into the, that, but we can see all the things that the enemy has deceived people. And now you have churches taking things on that they're not supposed to take on. You have people taking things on they're not supposed to take on. You have people believing they are what they're not. You have all these different things, and all it is is lies. It's just lies. So there's a, there's a believe in how Satan believes when he speaks into your life, or there's a true believing in the truth of God. And so there's going to be fruit either way. But the question is, the fruit that you create, would I be able to trust you with my child that that fruit would rub off on them and they would catch on to what you're doing and serve God with all their heart? I believe for some of you, your lives are partially in the rut. You're trying to get out of that rut trying to believe, trying to understand what all this, you got the enemy throwing thoughts at you going, you know, it's not even real. I mean, heaven's not even real. Hell's not even real. Why would God just burn everybody? Why would you discipline your child if they smacked your wife across the mouth? Why would you do the things you do? Do you believe in a way that you get all these benefits or do you believe in the way of the world? Because there's two different types. I'm going to pray. Production team, anyone back there, it doesn't matter. Everything can stop. I don't care. If you need to pray, come and pray. Don't go one more day not believing the way you should believe. Don't go one more day with just doing a check mark about church on Sunday. There's more to it than that. There's way, there's so much more to it than that. God's not a little check box and you check these things off. God's a lifestyle. Being a Christian is a lifestyle. So let's pray. Father, you know your people this morning. You know their hearts. You know everything about them. You know how they believe, Lord. You know the insides and outs. God, you know whether they repent to you only because they got caught. Therefore, really not a true repentance because they're just wanting to get out of a situation. God, you know where they really repent, God, when they repent from a whole heart, God. They repent with a heart that says, I'm not going to do this no more. How do I get out of this? How do I get away from this? How do I step away from these things? A repentant that grieves their own spirit. Father, you know. You know, Lord. You know their hearts. You know what they've done. You know what they do day in and day out. And Father, I ask that you would convict their heart right now and show them. Holy Spirit, be, show them. Flash before them some things that you're seeing that you want changed, some things that you're seeing that you need fixed in their lives. Flash before their eyes some things, God, that they're doing that they're not supposed to be doing. Flash before their eyes, God, the things that you want them to step out of and the things that you want them to walk into. Guys, I got a word from the Lord, and I can't share it with you right now, but I got a word from the Lord about the, the end times is coming, is coming, is coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. I know you've heard it. I know it's been said, but I'm telling you right now. The world will not see it, but if you're a true Christian, truly believing, you will see it. You will see what I'm talking about. The world is going to be blind to it. They're going to be blind to it, and they're going, to be, they're going to be caught off guard. Well, I thought I was. Well, I thought I was. But they weren't. Any sin that you have in your life is not of heaven. Get rid of it now. Any thought pattern that's not of heaven, ask the Lord to take it now. 
It's serious, guys. It's get. It, it's serious. It's the serious stuff that we're going through right now. Serious stuff that's happening right now in our world. It's it's exciting for me. I think it's exciting, but it's awful. Also devastating. There are going to be people that are not going to make heaven. Believe it. There are going to be people that are not going to make heaven. It's sad to say, but it's true. We need to fight for God. We need to fight for God. Fight for God. Fight for our Savior. Fight for Him. For our children's sake. Our children are not exempt from, our adult children are not exempt Just because we're Christians. I mean, we try to overstretch our hands over them and, 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 and believe that, that our prayers are going to break through to them. But we need to continue to pray, pray, pray day in and day out for our children. I had someone the other day that, that uh, had a situation with some drugs. And, um, and I just flat out said this. I said, well, do you, do you want your children to do that? Do you want your children to be involved in that? Because if you don't break it off right now, they will. They, it's just they will. They're going to do what you do, and they're going to do what they see you do. Jesus did what he's seen his father do, and he told us what his father did. Your children are no different than that. They only know what they're learning from you and from the world and what world you put in front of them. Be careful, parents. Be careful what you let set in front of your children's eyes. The Bible says set no evil thing before your eyes. Check it. He's coming. He's coming. So we do thank you, Lord. Thank you for your people. Thank you for the work day today. God, we get to serve you. We get to work together. We get to be a body, Lord. So I need every elbow to bend today, every wrist to move. Every knee to bend. Every hip to shake. Whatever it's going to take. Let's get this thing done. Let's get this daycare finished and get it open. Get it open. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for today. We love you. We glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys.